about a lot um, around the education sector. With the ongoing teacher strike, we want to find out what's really going on. We have seen Nat and Coupette not really speaking the same language, and the strike is now um, getting into the second week. So what is it all about? And also about the funding model. And for this particular conversation around the education, um, state of education in the nation, we have been joined by uh, Mr. Ibrahim Okungu. Um, he's the assistant treasurer Coupette. Nairobi branch. Karibu sana. Asante, thank you so much. Aha. Yeah, uh, as you have said, uh, Mr. Kungu, Ibrahim is the assistant treasurer, Kupe Nairobi branch. Okay. And uh, our strike, the Kupe strike is centering in week two today. Mm -hmm. And as we started, all teachers are not in class, especially the government teachers. We vote yesterday after the direction of the National Governing Council, the body that is mandated to call the strike and also to call, can also call off the strike. It's made up of the NAB officials mm -hmm. and also the executive secretaries. Okay. They directed all the Kupe teachers to stay away from school and from classes mm -hmm. until such a time that our demand is going to be heard and met. Okay. Yes. So um, we want to understand. Let's start from, from those that are still not clear on why not is saying there should not be a strike. Kupe is saying there should be a strike. What's the difference between this governing bodies and even TSC comes in? So tell us, uh, help us understand this okay. three. Okay, I think uh, one thing that you have to know, the CUPET is for Kenya Union post primary Education teachers. Mm -hmm. The teachers that are, most of them are in secondary school and tertiary institutions. NAT, which is the Kenya Union of, Nation, uh, Kenya Union of uh, Teachers, mm -hmm. is majorly for the primary school teachers. We did something which is called demarcation mm -hmm. that is some two to three years back. Why? Because we realized that the demand for teachers teaching in uh, secondary education and those teaching in primary education really have a total need. Our needs were very, very much different. Okay. Most of the times when you go on strike, you find that the, those who are in the NAT, their demand is not as those who are in the, in the yes. coupet. Mm -hmm. As you can see, that um, uh, most of our members, the members of coupet, their job group is from C4, uh, from C3, C4, C5 up to D, D4. That's for the chief principals. Mm -hmm. But those who are in, uh, in NAT, most of their members, they teach in primary section, and they are in from C3 coming da backward. Those who are in uh, C3 in, uh, secondary, in, in primary school, the NAT members, they are administrators of the head of institutions and C4. Mm -hmm. While for the COOPET, for you to be an uh, head of institution or for you to be administrator, you must be in D1 going upward. So that is why we realize that the need of Coupet and the need of NAT are very much different. Mm -hmm. So when they call the strike, first of all, the NAT did not follow the, the right channel in calling up the strike. Mm -hmm. we, only we only came to realize that they did not serve even the Ministry of Labor. So they were not serious with their strike. While the Coupet, we were very, very much serious because you find out the Coupet members, we had issues that ma made us to come to, uh, to the road. One of them the stagnation, you have seen it. The, you find a teacher stagnates for a very long period of time. Like mm -hmm. uh, the one teacher, Mr. Muru from, from Ofafa Jirik, was hired. Then the teacher started teaching in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. The teacher is almost retiring. The student that he taught when, uh, up to uh, even 2010, they are in the same job group. They are earning the same salary. This, oh. is the te this is a teacher who has done a lot to this country. He has served. All his life he has been serving the, the nation. Mm -hmm. He's having master's degree. He's now registered for PhD wow. with only three years to, re to, to, re to retire. Mm. This teacher is earning as, as somebody who was employed in the year 2015. Okay. Quite unfair. Okay. Another thing that I went for strike was about the medical cover. Mm -hmm. I think most of you know that uh, we have been having the government took away our medical allowance in the year 2016 so that we were running, we were having a comprehensive medical cover for all the teachers. In the last financial year, we were allocated 21 billion. This financial year, that money was reduced to 11 billion. If 21 billion was not enough that time, now it has oh, been reduced okay. to halfway. So you realize that teachers are only up to December. Then after December, we don't know where we are going to go. Mm -hmm. And the, most of the hospitals are withdrawing from this cover. If we used to have uh, very good hospitals like uh, uh, the Medhill Hospital, which I think nowadays I think is not there but as much. We used to have a Metropolitan, mm -hmm. we used to have Avenue Hospitals. We used to have Aga Khan. All of them were treating teachers. And the Mission Hospital, the Catholic Hospital, uh -huh. right now they, they, they discontinue their services 
from the teachers. So we are only trying to say that the government must be very serious with the welfare of teachers. N medical cover is another reason why we went on strike. Mm -hmm. Another thing we went on strike, you can see that they are talking about the CBA. This, the second phase of the CBA was supposed to, to the teachers were supposed to be paid by 1st of, of July. They were not paid. That money was not there. Tell us about the CBA. Yes, the CBA is a cycle because we told the government mm -hmm. that we don't want teachers to be going on strike each and every time. Uh -huh. So the only thing that you are going to help us, let us have a collective bargaining agreement where the government, uh, the government will come on a, uh, on a table and say that from this year to this year, this is how we are going to handle our workers. Mm -hmm. So the first phase of the CBA, there was an increment. And they say that between this time and this time, we are adding something on a tune of between, uh, between 1,000 to 10,000 for the highest paid teacher. So it's supposed to be honored each and every year. Each and every financial year, you're supposed to be getting something. Uh -huh. So you find out that um, the CBA, which started 2021, 2025, mm -hmm. we, got, we got the first part last year were paid. Then this year, they were not going to pay. They were not ready to pay until we went on strike. It's when it was backdated to... Uh, the money that you are supposed to have from 1st of July, we were paid in August, which means it was backdated. Mm -hmm. If we were not aggressive enough, if we were quiet about it, that money could have gone like that. Teachers could have lost it. So we say that they have given us the CBA, but there were so many demands that we put forward to the Teacher Service Commission. Okay. Yes. So these are, these are the main reasons why... No, we this the, uh, the major one mm -hmm. is the issue of JSS teachers. The junior, both oh. were employed in the JSS. Okay. Remember, most of them are graduates, and uh, these teachers are really suffering a lot. Uh -huh. And I can say that the, you see uh, the, 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 the person in charge of the budget, the, budget, the chairman of the budget committee, Dindi mm -hmm. Nyoro, mm -hmm. he keeps on saying, we have allocated enough money to absorb all the JSS mm -hmm. in the system. Mm -hmm. These people have not been absorbed. When, when uh, last month we were told, can you, we, are, we don't have that money, there is that money, we don't have the money. So all the government arms are speaking different, different voices. Mm -hmm. I want to tol tell my friend Buddy, when, uh, he was, b before he was selected the CS for finance, he was fighting for these people. He was saying the government must absorb all these teachers. A teacher who is uh, employed at as, as the JSS, mm -hmm. they are earning 17,000 Kenyan shillings. That is a gross salary. Currently. Currently. No. This is a gross salary. So gross salary, wow. when it's after the sum deduction, mm -hmm. the medical cover must be deducted, NSF has to be deducted, NHF has to be deducted, these teachers had a loan, these teachers may be having some uh, uh, help, he has mm -hmm. to pay, this teacher is paying for the housing, housing levy, yeah. end up with earning less than around 10,000, or less than 10,000. Mm -hmm. And you're staying That's in Nairobi. How are you going to pay? How are you, are you going, going to, to offer yourself? How are you going to, to, to deliver in, in class? Mm -hmm. If you're earning less than 10,000, Okay. Yes. So this is this is some of the things that the government needs to hear the and needs to take actions it, on. Yes. Especially on the matter of JSS teachers, because how will a teacher be getting a gross of seventeen thousand? Yes, they're expected to to perform yes. their work, and with the new education system, in fact, they're very critical, you know, in the execution of this. So, what policies then need? Um, to change? What do you think needs to change so that we are not in this um, place where the only language that the government understands is strike? And because we have seen that over the years, teachers yes. striking, <coughs> doctors striking. Yes. We even saw Gen Z uh, coming from Andamano, and that's the language that mm. the government understands. That what needs to change? Okay, I think number one, the government needs to be very serious, especially in the education sector. Number one, the children belong to the government. And there is no way that the government wants to have cheap labor so that these children can be taught. If you are subjecting these children, even in the syllabus that we have, one of the reasons, even in the Constitution, in the Constitution of Kenya, mm -hmm. is about the fundamental human rights. The government is abusing the fundamental human rights of these teachers. So the government has to be very, very serious. We know that the government said very well that they have employed around 46,000 teachers. Is it employment mm -hmm. or they are in contract? It's not. You employ and then you're giving them 17,000. Why can't you employ less so that they deliver? Mm -hmm. So what the government will change that policy, we shall be in a better position. The government must also respect the, 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 the court orders. The court orders say that these teachers, there's no teacher should be employed on, 
on on a, on a, on, a, on a contract term. Mm -hmm. These people are being paid on the contract. Why? We should not have a chief labor in the government. That's number one, especially in the teaching areas. If you go to other ministries, those who are in, uh, in, in contract or those who are in interns, mm -hmm. they are being paid 30,000 and above. Mm -hmm. the, what about the teachers? They are being paid only 17,000. That is gross. Gross. When it, it is deducted, le net is less than 10,000. Quite unfortunate. You have this teacher to deliver. Will, it, will the teacher deliver? Mm -mm. That's why teachers are depressed. So the government must be very serious. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, if the government can avoid the wastage that we have in ministries, we cannot be having a problem with the employment of teachers. Mm -hmm. Go to these schools where, they, where this, the, 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 we have the CBC, grade 7 and grade 8. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Ayeta, it is bad, very pathetic. You go to some of the schools, I teach in Andorra Secondary School. Mm -hmm. We are surrounded by two schools, that is James Gishuru, and also we have Wangu Primary School. We also have uh, uh, Tomboya, which are hosting the JSS uh, uh, learners. Mm -hmm. You find a class is having uh, up to 120 students handled by one teacher. Wow. And this teacher is being paid 17,000. And you expect? You expect the teacher to deliver. There is, no, there is nothing. There is no learning which is taking place in those schools. Mm -hmm. The government must just be very serious with the education system. Yes. If they are not, go they are not going to be serious, then uh, it is something which is going to be a bomb blast. Yeah. It's, going, it's a time bomb for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me ask you then, um, mm -hmm. because you have clearly you know, explained that uh, NAT is usually teachers in the lower, in, yeah, primary, in the primary section. And then uh, Coupette is mostly the tertiary institution. Yes, yes. But now, um, when I'm looking at this, and you've said the JSS teachers, aren't the teachers in NAT also affected? Then why have they called off their strike? Oh, okay. Uh, the JSS members, all the JSS members are in Coupette. Or oh, they fall under Coupette. They fall under Coupette. Mm -hmm. Those who are few are in permanent and pensionable term, they are in Coupette. Mm -hmm. Even those who are in under contract, they are members of Coupette. Coupette. Because most of them are, uh, are graduates, and uh, we talked about junior secondary. You see, the word secondary, secondary here okay, is so for, tertiary. after demarcation, is for all the tertiary. Mm -hmm. So all the JSS members, they are our members. Okay. One reason why NAT did not even call the strike, mm -hmm. they don't have a national examination current this year. We don't have KCP. Uh -huh. So they realized even if they strike, the they, were, they, were get, they, they were striking for nothing. I think that is what you, with the ex uh, uh, sector general of NAT, realized. They were not have, their strike was not going to have any impact at all. Mm -hmm. Our members, they have set the exam, KCSE. Mm -hmm. Our members are going to administer the KCSE exam. Uh -huh. At the same time, the people are going to mark these KCSE exams. Wow. We still have three years to do the KCSE exams. Actually, four years, because now this year, next year, up to those who are in Form 1 must do KCSE before we transform fully to CBC. Mm -hmm. So, the Coupet members, they have to be heard because they have a big role to play even in the national examination. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, at what point will you, um, will, do you see the strike um, being called off? Okay. We are even ready to call off the strike. But if the employee is not ready to come down and talk to the teachers, which is our, uni our national official, mm -hmm. then there is no, it's like they are saying there is nothing that, that, they are not serious with the, our grievances. So I'm saying mm -hmm. the only time that the union are going to call off the strike, even at Tuoli told them, let the teacher service commission came up from where they are and listen to the teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even if you are in a house and then your child told you, told you that there is I want A, B, C, D, you have to listen to them. Mm -hmm. They don't want to listen to the teachers. They are coming with a, a very, I don't know, the court order that you know, you have to respect the court order. The court order was supposed to to be brought to the union before the, we start the strike. Mm -hmm. Now, after the strike is the fourth day, you're telling me you have a court order to stop the strike. Yeah. What about those who have strike? We must have something which is called a return to work formula. Okay. So once we have that, we'll be having no problem at all. Uh, just to back what you're saying, I'm saying uh, in the news, this particular daily, it says the union uh, criticized the TSC for failing to honor the government pledge to hire junior secondary school teachers on permanent and pensionable terms, warning that the strike is akin to struggle for liberation. So what you're also just fighting for is for this JSS teachers to be on permanent and pensionable. Exactly. Not just, not even the 30 not even the contract. You want permanent We want them to be permanent and pensionable. 
That is what we want. That's the meaning that we want. Mm -hmm. Remember, I want to say that uh, I'm one of the beneficiary of the economic stimulus program. Uh -huh. That was uh, introduced in the year 2010 by the former president, the the, I think the third president, Uhuru Kenyatta, with the Kibaki government. They said that they, they employed the teachers under economic stimulus program. And I think we were around 20,000 teachers. Mm -hmm. After one year, all of us were confirmed. We were paid, we were being paid 15,000. Mm -hmm. We took it for one year. Then that is the last strike that the union had. That is 20, 2011. Mm -hmm. And the strike was to uh, full so that all the teachers were to be confirmed on permanent and pensionable term. Mm -hmm. Our, that time, uh, we, were to be, we were to be on contract for three years. But after one year, we realized, no, it's not possible. We cannot have two teachers in the same staff room. One is in permanent pensionable term handling a yeah. candidate class, the other one is in contract, being, and being given 15,000, mm. employed by the same, the same employer. So totally, that's okay. a discrimination. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, and that's what you're fighting. That is what we are fighting against. for. Uh, and just moving away from that a bit, from the strike that is ongoing, Yes. Um, I'm seeing one of the stories that we were discussing earlier with my co-host, uh, still on education, is shame over bursaries. Yes. And... Um, so there's a scandal. The Auditor General reveals that while some of the candidates given education cash could be could not be traced, uh, CDF committees didn't provide crucial support documents on vetting of needy learners, while others failed to produce acknowledgement letters from beneficiary institutions. Yes, yes, so yes. this is the current state. Yeah, that's the current state. And uh, I want to say that it's quite unfortunate mm -hmm. because currently... They are talking about the bursaries. And I have to tell you, I'm in the education sector, and I know what, what happens. Mm -hmm. The area which is being abused most is bursaries. Why? Why? You realize that, number one, uh, start with the MCA. MCA was the bursary for the MCA in the award, award level. The MP has got a bursary. The Women Dep has got a bursary. The, the governor, there's a bursary falling under the governor. We have the best from the Ministry of Education. We have the presidential bursary. So there are bursary everywhere. Yeah. So you find that maybe one student will benefit from the, this one for MCA, for the MP, mm -hmm. for the governor, and uh, even for the what? For the women rep, for the senator, eh? for mm -hmm. the presidential. So what, what happens next? And remember, education is supposed to be free. Free. Mm -hmm. And the government is also sending capitation to these schools. So it is highly abused. You find out that. If this person, if you don't know, let's say the one for uh, for the MCS, if you don't know somebody, you might not get it. Okay. They are not given. They are only given those who are those those, those whom they know, mm -hmm. those who are politically right. And then somebody who has get, get this bursary, they and they go ahead and sell them to other needy students. So, the most important that need to be done, if the education is supposed to be free, mm -hmm. let it be. Free. Let the government provide everything. Okay. All these bursaries should be centralized to one one area and they say that this is what we are going to do to do this this is how we are going to distribute this money and remember currently the bursary is only handling feeding program in schools because the government is paying for government is paying for the tuition fee which was i think it was used to be twenty two thousand. now it has been reduced to around seventeen thousand per, per, per year mm -hmm. now the bursary is being paid it's lunch money le lunch levy in schools mm -hmm. and the boarding facilities in schools mm -hmm. so the best thing that the government should do should allocate enough money to the education system. Uh -huh. Currently, most schools, you can see the, f the, the students are going with the, with the rim of photocopying papers. And they are being told you must go with the JK, JK1, or you go with the paper one. Because the schools are not able to pay, to, to buy those to buy things. things. Why? Uh -huh. The capitation has been reduced. Mm -hmm. That money which you're supposed to use for buying the stationaries is no longer being sent to schools. So, so what needs to be done? The government must be serious with the education sector. Mm -hmm. There is a total mess in the education sector. There is something that um, there is something, something is not... There is something you're not adding up at all. Mm -hmm. Yes, at all, at all, at all, at all. Okay. What about the schools that does not have, let's say, uh, that the MC are not active? They will not be paid for that bursary. Yeah. you got some schools which the, the, the MPs or the MCS own. They say, this is my school. They will bring all the, all the money in that basket. Mm -hmm. are, I, the way they can identify the industry is a problem. We have some students who are very extremely needy. They can't get these bursaries. Yes, they can't get the bursaries. Some people are able. They are getting the bursaries. So mm -hmm. that model, I don't know where it came from, 
I think the Ministry of Education should hire the right people, those people who knows what is required, those people who know that this is the this is a mess. We have to fix this mess. Uh -huh. Yes. So you are recommending that we have a centralized system we, of getting we disbursing need to the add a centralized system of disbursing all that money. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will help a lot. Okay. And by the way, if all that money can be brought together, let me tell you, our education facilities will have will be the best in Africa, even in the world. Okay. Because there's a lot of wastage in the money, there are a lot. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense because as I was telling my co-host earlier, there's a young people, it's unfortunate that they get to class eight and they can't proceed to uh, even secondary education. Yes. yes these are basic, you know, you need that as a, the certificate, KCSC certificate uh -huh. as a basic for you to get into employment, to get something decent out here at least. Uh -huh. So when you talk about free education, then we need to have access to these things. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes. Now, uh, before I move on to even the funding model, because that still mm -hmm. is in the education system, the new funding model that is being um, proposed, mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about the JSS. Uh, yes, yes. Being, where will they be domiciled? Because till now, people have not been told. Parents are not <coughs> sure. Okay, where okay. will their children go after grade 8? Mm, exactly. Especially for those that are in grade yeah, 8. That is a very, a very, very important question and uh, this is something that we have been, uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I keep on saying that the government need to have a very serious advisors. Mm. Currently, uh, the JSS, those who are in the CBC, mm. the grade 8 now, you know these people, they are still saying they are going to be domiciled in the domiciled in the, in the primary schools. Mm -hmm. But we don't have facilities there. There are no classes. Some of the schools mm -hmm. where these people are, they have never seen a laboratory with their own eyes. Mm -hmm. sure. they, they have never seen at all. If you go to some of the primary schools, this primary school, they used to feed the secondary schools. All the rooms in the primary schools are occupied. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to take, let's say, like in a place like Wangu Primary School, the JSS are 1,400. Wow. That is the grade 8. They are, grade 8 alone, they are 1,000, 1, around 1,400 mm -hmm. in a school. Where are, where are we going to get classes to feed, to feed the, in them in grade 9? Where are we going to have teachers if they have employed 46,000 mm -hmm. and all of them are in contract? These are the people that you still want to handle the grade 9. Mm -hmm. how, are they going to, how are they going to help? It's not going to, it cannot be achieved. So the best thing, between now and December, not even December, and November, the Ministry of Education should now be very practical. Let them go to schools and find out how this grade 9 can now be transferred to secondary school. Mm -hmm. Because that is where we have facilities. The right labs. now, like in uh, some of the schools, the f the, the f we have around 600 or 500 form ones. These class are going to be empty because the form fours are going to exit. The form threes will be, in, will be occupying the form four classes. The form, the form twos will be occupying the form three classes. Mm -hmm. The form ones will be occupying the form two classes. classes. So all the blocks in form one classes I will empty. be empty. Yes. Most schools... The CDF have done a great, a great work because they have, they, have, they have constructed very modern laboratories in these schools. They have constructed kitchens, they have constructed the dormitories, they have constructed all the things. Mm -hmm. We are not going to have students in Form 1. Why can the government come to a consensus and realize that the junior secondary, that is the grade 9, should be transferred to secondary school so that they can uh, get easy, in a, they, they can even be handled very well. We have teachers who are qualified there. Yes, like you know, some of the t some of the subjects which are being taught in uh, in junior secondary, they are technical. I think uh, you know very well, the, the, like this topic, which was probability, mm -hmm. we used to do it in form three. Now it's in grade eight. Yeah, they're, they're the handling some atomic structure, <laughs> atomic structure, and periodic table. <laughs> they used to disturb those who are in <laughs> in, in form three. Now it's in in grade eight. Grade eight. When you go to grade nine, the, com the, 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 the I think the the work, the content. It's even, it's even more complex. Mm -hmm. so, so the only teachers that are in a position to handle them the are the, those who are in secondary school. Uh -huh. Yes, and number one, be, we are going to have space in classes. We are going to have enough work, workload with the teachers there. We are going to have the laboratory. All the resources will be there. Mm -hmm. Why can the government realize that the best thing that we are going to do to these children, let's take them to secondary school, then they are going to be helped. They did a very good, uh, they did something which is very good by a very good decisions by retaining them grade 8 in primary section because there were rooms in primary. You remember they were supposed to be taken to 
high school. Yes, yes. But they said, no, let's return them where? In primary. Why? Because there were resources there. The only resources which you don't have in primary schools was the laboratory. Mo few. Actually, I want to tell you, very few schools. Countable. Very countable schools are having the laboratory. So the students are learning a practical exam. They're doing it theoretically. Which beats the purpose. It, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all mm -hmm. on the CBC. Okay. Yeah, so maybe CBC was a very good idea. But the approach the government is giving it is not adding up at all, at all, at all. I think mm. the ministry does not have qualified people to advise them on what's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Let them involve teachers. Teachers will tell, teachers know what's happening in those schools. They know teachers better. will tell them this is the direction, follow this route. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to be okay. okay. But if they don't want to, to listen to us, we'll just keep quiet and listen and just watch them messing up with our children. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you are the stakeholders, you, you need to at least give a, a, an advice on it. Then, um, for those that are wondering, because the idea for the CBC was, is rather that they are going to, if those that are doing sciences, then there's a STEM yes, yes, yes. school, then those that are doing art, art yes. is an art school, and mm. I think the other one is sports, right? Yes. So, what is the idea behind CBC? Okay, the idea, the CBC. It was a very good idea because, as you realize right now, uh, some of us who are in school uh, earlier 90, 90s, we used to have a uh, subject like uh, art and craft and music. We used to have something like home science and business education, OSBED. Mm -hmm. So we used to have even the civic, civics learning. So you remember, we were being given the skills that can make you fit in the, in the society. Uh, something like home science. You are being trained how to bake bread, how to make mandazis, how to even stitch your own clothes. You're being told, you are using the, the singer machines, how this is how it's being used. You're being told how to wash the clothes. So those are the skills which were very, very necessary. Now, after some times we became too theoretical, the practical aspect of learning was left behind. Mm -hmm. Now the CBC was to bring out this practical aspect so that even if somebody will finish uh, grade eight or uh, the basic education, you will have an idea that can help him to survive. Mm -hmm. Yes. So okay. it was a very good idea. And what I'm saying, mm -hmm. if we are going to have some schools for STEM, some schools are going to have for art and the rest, still we are going to have a problem. Like, look at what all the impansive Jiru. You know, Jiru starts from uh, Dandora up to Kamulu. Mm -hmm. How many schools there have serious laboratory, like Dandora Secondary School? That's the best school which have with every, all the facilities. Some schools does not have those things. So it means that those who are going to do the STEM, all of them will, will find, all of them will become a secondary school. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be going to the national schools. Then up to now, we don't know which criteria the government is going to use to place these children in the STEM schools or the art schools. This is something that they could have done a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But up to date, we don't know. We so are just learning. Amo yeah, it is amorphous. <laughs> we don't know. Which is quite unfortunate. It is very unfortunate. And it shows how much uh, unprepared, unprepared the government the is. Government is yes. And uh, the lack of concern or the mm. lack of priority yes. is given to the education sector. Yes, yes, Now, yes. let's talk about the new education funding model mm -hmm. that the government is trying to introduce that has faced quite the opposition, especially um, from campus students, because this affects yes, yes, the yes, campus yes, yes. students. Yes. Tell us about it. What do you think about it? Okay. Uh, I think I'm one person's a beneficiary of uh, the help. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a student later at Kenyatta University. And uh, when, we, when I did my case CSE, we didn't have any, I didn't have anybody to sponsor our education system. We were told help is there. We signed for the help. Help gave us at least the sustainers money. Mm -hmm. The same same money we were using it to even to, to support some of our, our siblings at home. Sure. So what the government was doing, there was uniformity in that model. Whereby all students who have qualified to join university, they will be given, th that time they were, we were being given between 35,000 to 52,000. The maximum was 52,000 okay. with a bursary of 8,000. So will somebody will comfortably get 60,000. Mm -hmm. So what used to happen, if somebody was able, there are those people who are very able, even in, when you were studying with them, they were very able. They were not going for the, for, for, for the loans. Those people who are very able, we still have them in the society right now. It is very wrong to categorize that somebody is able. You can say somebody is able to, by just the appearance. 
But deep inside, this person is, not, is, is very unable. Mm -hmm. So what government should do? We should have a uniform model of sponsoring or of funding the university education. If they realize that we are going to give the loan between 50 and 100,000, depending on your ability, mm -hmm. go and apply for the loan that you can, so that the government will fund you. But saying that this one here is in first band, second band, third band, mm -hmm. is not making sense at all. Yeah, because how would it they know? It is not making sense at all. You will not know that. If you look at, if you look at me, or if I look at you, I will I, okay, will I come and say, you know, you are able, you, yeah, let me place in band one. <laughs> or I place my brother here in band two. Mm -hmm. Or this one is band, in band five. That thing is not making sense at all. So, I want to ask this person called Billy Kipsang. Billy Kipsang was one of the senior officers in the HELB mm -hmm. between, I think, the, in the year up to, up to 2010 there. That time, the CEO was called Cheboy, the, f the, f the governor of Baringo. They used to listen to the students. The students would go and say, okay, you are, ne you are needy, yes, give us evidence, you bring the death certificate of your parents, you bring uh, the necessary document, then you'll be, you'll be given money according to the, that needy. But now this system, this system that you are having here of the bands, I don't know where they came, uh, where they get it from, it, it's going to discriminate many students. Mm -hmm. Many. And I can tell you, currently, many students have deferred semesters. Because of the Majority fee of them. Problem. Because of the fee problem. Majority of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, what made them to change their mind? Why can't they just go back to the old model, which was very, very, very convenient working. for learners? It was working. Yeah, because people are wondering, um, why, why, wh what is the need to change it? Because students have not complained um, about it. Yeah. And now the TVET, TVET institutions, yes. they're also not, are they, do they qualify to, for this? Yes, the, uh, the TVET do qualify, and uh, currently they are, they, are, they are also getting the loan from the, mm -hmm. from the help. And uh, that's why I want to say that our government is not giving a priority where it deserves. Mm -hmm. The TVET, you know, the amount of money that they are, they are paying, mm -hmm. it's highly subsidized. But a comrade, those who are in, in universities, these people, you know, when you go to university, people know that you, your government will do for you everything. Not like TVET. TVET, you can call people, will make for you a rambe, you, you do very fast, you finish it. And the government has been sponsoring the TVET. Mm -hmm. So, Immediately they came and start now saying that this loan for the comrade, those who have passed, you know, those who have qualified to join the universities now, Nazima Tugao, na wale watu wambayo wakonda TVET, wakonda wale pata at least D or E, Nazima Tugao ipesa, that's where they, they, they miss the, the point. Mm -hmm. These people who are having the brains, those people who have, they have, they, they have, at least they have performed, you have seen they have performed, they have been called to universities, we can just help them. You know, the government does not know that if you invest in these people, you are saving a lot even to the, to the economy. Mm -hmm. Because these people, once they have graduated, they will bring more to the, to the economy. The economy. Yes. Because these are the people that are going to do the science, the, the hard courses, the hard which courses. are usually expensive. Exactly. You know, medicine. It, and you yes. get someone who cannot be able to sponsor themselves. Yes. Now that is where the government comes in. Yes, 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 mm. yes. Yeah, so Mimi, I'll, I'll say, according to me, I'll say that that, mo that model should just be scrapped off and we go back to the old model whereby they, there was a uniformity. Mm -hmm. you, are, you have been called for, 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 for medicine, let the government send equivalent amount to that, that department of medicine, but for students, let's be uniform in funding. Mm -hmm. Yes, With the, let's say from, they can just pay the minimum is 50,000, the maximum is 100,000. Mm -hmm. That's not much. Uh -huh. It's very much affordable. Okay. Yes. And this we're talking in regards to receiving the help loan, right? Yes. But now the system that is currently in place, you know, th that it was that scholarship. It's al almost like a scholarship. Mm. You get um, you the application. You do the application, of course, prior. Then you pass your exams. You get B plus and above. Then for for a men, then you're get, getting the government sponsorship. Then for ladies, it's really around B. B, yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Then you get the government sponsorship, and your fee is mm. um, subsidized by subsidized by, yeah. by a quite a considerable amount. Because mm. during my days, for people who are paying courses that were around eighty thousand, these guys would pay around twenty eighteen. Yes, you know, yes, that yes. kind of thing. Uh -huh. So. With this funding model, how is that like? Do we have the scholarships where 
people called by government are getting this or is it completely by application now you get into those bans? Okay, I think we used to have that. What would used to happen, mm -hmm. the government used to send me directly to the different faculties yes, in the universities. Mm -hmm. So like uh, if the University of Nairobi, we have uh, under student doing medicine, the government will pay for them that fee for medicine. Exactly. The, this, the, this number is doing education, the government will send that man to that education. Mm -hmm. So the money was coming from the ministry to the university direct. So the small amount, like the tuition fee, like when you used to get help, mm -hmm. uh, let's say from, for my case I was getting 52,000. So this 52,000, the government will uh, deduct 8,000 to send directly as a tuition fee to the universities. Mm -hmm. So which means you'll be, get, you'll be given 40. 44,000. So the 44,000 was to be, uh, most of the time was being divided into two semester. So first semester will get 22,000, second semester will get another 22,000. Mm, but 8,000 is being taken directly to the universities to subsidize your, your tuition fee. Mm -hmm. So after the government have paid 4,000 per semester or 8,000 per academic year, there is this a small amount which the, the parent and the student will, will pay. Mm -hmm. Most of us we used to use that extra amount, let's say 22,000 to pay, it was like around 16,000. So 22 uh, minus 16, you still have how much? So Around 6,000 to survive with the whole semester. Mm -hmm. And it was very, very convenient. Very. So I'm saying that the government, let them go back to the old model and then say, we are going to have, we are going to sponsor the student with this amount of money. Mm -hmm. Part of it will go to that tuition. If you are paying 16,000, we are paying tuition of, of 4,000. So they, they probably only pay 14,000. Mm -hmm. This is going to help majority of the students okay yes it will make education more accessible it more will make easy. it more accessible more affordable and more friendly mm -hmm. yes okay that's amazing so as we come to a close on this particular conversation what are your main recommendations to the government from all that we've talked about from the teacher strike from JSS um, to the university we've talked all the way both for the students and the teachers what are your main recommendations okay number one the Teacher Service Commission must listen to the unions. That is number one. And uh, by listening to the unions, they must look for the, they must sit on the round table and see what is good for the for the students, not for the teachers. Number two, the government, the JSS teach, the JSS members, they must be employed so that we can have a smoothless transition even in the education sector. Mm -hmm. Number three. The Ministry of Education, let them employ good people can give them good advices. Teachers are there. They are the major stakeholders. Let them come down. Let them not sit in the Jogo house coming up with the policies there. Mm -hmm. Let them go down and find out what is happening there. Mm -hmm. let, the, let the CS go to the universities, get the views from the student. Let them come to the school, find out what's happening in the schools. If they are not going to come down, it will be very difficult. It is very unfortunate that when these people are looking for votes, they will go Wananda Pogakwa village. Mm -hmm. But now once they have been employed in the offices, they, they, Wanamuka Subui, Nyayo, Jogo House, Wanamuka Subui, Nyayo House, they don't even know what's happening there. Mm -hmm. Let them come to the ground and see what's happening. Okay. Yes. Great. They should be in touch with the ground. They should be in touch with the ground. Uh, get the necessary advice from teachers because they are stakeholders in yes. this. They know what is affecting the students. They know how it should be. Uh, yes, in fact, yeah. they are the experts in yes. this area. So uh, that is a great recommendation. Thank you very much, Thank uh, you so much. Ibrahim for coming on board and giving us this amazing insights. So we are looking to see the teacher strike going on till when the return to work formula Return to work for me and there. the TSC must come down and talk in a round table with the with, with the with the unions. Okay, TSC yes. to have a round table with the union. Yes. Thank you very much. That's the direction that has been given. We have been talking to Ibrahim Okungu, who is the assistant treasurer Kupet uh, Nairobi branch. I hope you've taken something from that. Sako will be uh, still continuing with this same topic with different guests. We get to hear from the student student leaders in the universities what they think about this. You also talk to us on our socials. The hashtag is why in the morning at Y254 channel. My name is Stefanietta. We take a short break. We'll be right back. Thank you so much.